G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today we're going to take a closer look at LCDs. These are pretty cool blocks, well, in Space Engineers that allow you to do all sorts of things. If you're a scripter you can add abilities to put damage systems, how much fuel you've got, how much battery life you've got, you can put these all around your command center in your base or in your station. I'm not quite that skilled, but I can still make use of these things. There are a few different LCD types that the game already has. There's the simple LCD panel, there's the double wide LCD panel, and then there's the small widescreen text panel. And as you can see, they actually give you a pretty decent variety of screen sizes. Then you've got these little special ones, these corner LCDs. These were originally a mod, but they were so good and so useful that they were actually imported into the vanilla game, much like the corner lights. Both of these mods were originally by a guy called Arendelle, and the LCDs can be handy for door labels and things. If we have a look at the larger LCDs, when we're placing them, we get an indicator of which way is up. If the arrows are pointing up, that means we're the right way. So this will make the text run from the bottom to the top if we're reading left to right, and blah blah blah. I think you get the idea. Arrows pointing up, that way things will be that way around. If we look into our text panels or our LCD panels by pressing K when they're highlighted in yellow, we can see the usual control panel stuff. The toggle block on and off, show block in terminal and all that. Then we get down to name. After that, things get a bit more interesting. You can put your custom scripted data in and you can put in your title and your text. So this public title, let's name this my first LCD. And then we'll go edit text and we'll say, I think this should should work. And then we are all excited thinking it's going to show up. And we're left with a blank screen. There's an extra step you need to do to get that text to display on the screen at when you're just wandering around. And that's this show text on screen. And now it works. Even with that, for, with that button turned off, you can find the text that's on a screen. So you can hide bits of story in a scenario if you want, so that people have to actually interact with the screens. And if you interact with the screens with left click or F, you'll show up the public title and then the text below it. So that can be quite a useful way if you make, say, a small block LCD, because these are available for small ships too. One thing I will note quickly is without power, LCDs will just display offline. So if you want to place them on the ground, you'll need a power source. And this is where the little LCDs come in, particularly the text panel. If you place one of them down on the back of say a reactor, if we grab our small reactor here and we drop one down, let's bring it a bit closer, drop that on the floor. And then we can pop our text panel on that. This looks like a tiny little CRT monitor. So you can have those lying around the place if you want little bits of storyline to be added to any scenarios you create. Or if you just want to hide rude messages for your friends. Not that I've ever done that. <clears throat> you can display images on LCDs as well. And the way you do this is by making sure show text is off. The images won't show if that's on. And then heading down to our loaded textures. The standard loaded textures are offline, online, arrow, cross, danger, no entry, construction, and a white screen. So if you wanted to display the arrow, you click add to selection, and then it'll display. For arrows like this, it could be useful to rotate your screen to a different direction. Say we want to point to the right, instead of placing the panel in the normal orientation, we can turn it sideways, put on the same thing, Let's put our arrow on, and then it'll point the way we want. 
There's probably another way to rotate that using scripts, but this works. You can also make these display multiple images. So instead of adding just the arrow, you can add the cross and then make it switch every unit of time that you decide. So I put that every 1.6 seconds and they'll switch back and forth and back and forth. That's pretty cool, but we can do some more cool things with text. If we run downstairs or just jump down this hole, you can see this image. This is not one of the included images. This is also not a mod. You can use this method to create images on a server that you have no control over, as this is actually just text using the monospace font. If you go into the LCD, you can see down here, you've got your font selection and using monospace, you can use these other ones if you're typing different things on your screen and you want a particular display to come up, but using monospace and size one font and a clever piece of software called SE Image to LCD, you can put images in your game without much effort at all. And that's what I'm going to show you next, how we do this. There are some limitations to doing things this way. If I show you the original image loaded into the game as a mod, we'll put the two side by side. So we've got warning explosive, add to selection. Now, if I turn off my lights, you can see a bit of a difference here. One is that I didn't include the black background on this one, but we'll ignore that. If you look in really close here, you can see there's fairly fine detail around these points for the explosive. On this one, however, it's quite pixelated. That's because using the monospace mono font, you only have 178 pixels per 178. Whereas, Using a mod to import these pictures, you have 512 by 512. So you've got a lot more pixels to work with, so you can make things much more detailed. But this one will not work for servers unless you are friendly with the server admin and they add the mod for you. So we might look at how to do the mod one in the future, but for now, let's look at this one because this one is easy and is usable in almost all situations. And I reckon it's pretty cool because you can easily adjust how bright this thing is. If we drop these colors down, it's now a bit more dull. There's less luminance to it. And you can adjust these things to whatever level you want by adjusting the text color. However, adjusting the background color doesn't seem to have any impact whatsoever. You can even recolor your image by adjusting the text colors one way or another. Kind of like the hue balance adjustments that you can do in things like Photoshop. How do we get this text? Well, for that, we're gonna have to pop out of Space Engineers and show you my desktop. Fingers crossed, nothing's awkward. So we'll go to desktop and I've got this little folder, SE image to LCD. This is the software you need. This thing converts a picture of your choosing into text that can be used as an image in, LC in an LCD in Space Engineers by making use of the monospace font. Simply open it up and let's pick, let's use this radioactive hazard one. Browse, pick the hazard, okay. We want to uncheck RLE encode. Not really sure what that means, but I know we have to uncheck it. If you have a particularly large image, you can actually split this. So we could create a two by three grid for a large image so that we can spread it across multiple LCDs and it will give us the text that we need for each one. We'll show you that shortly. So let's click convert and then we'll get the text we need. Come on, let's go, come on. It sometimes takes a little while for this to work. All right, here we go. Now, because this wasn't a square image, I'm pretty sure this is going to be stretched, but that's okay. We can now copy this to clipboard 
pop back to Space Engineers. And let's place down another LCD and show you how to import this. Pop that LCD down. Interact with it. We want to edit our text. And we want to simply press Control V to paste that text in. And it should look like this. Lots and lots of question marks. Click OK. Set your text to show on screen. And then we need to change our font to that mono space font. And then drop our font size right all the way down to 0.1. And there we go. We have our symbol. Stretched, but we've got it. You may want to resize these to square before you import them. Or we can try this. I haven't tried this before. I'm interested to see if this will work. How will it display on this one? Paste that. Show text on screen. Drop that down to mono space and 0.1. And there we go. It's perfect for the stretched or the widescreen ones. This might even work on the double wide. If we want to go huge with the radioactive. Sadly, the 2 by one sized LCD isn't going to really let us do that. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that the image we create using the monospace font is designed to be 178 pixels by 178. It doesn't get stretched, that text, when you put it on the 2 by one LCD. It only provides the text for the image for a single width. You can manually do a wider image using that software, but you'd have to create the two side-by-side -side images and then manually intersect them and line up all of the line breaks and oh, that just sounds horribly painful to me, so I'm not gonna do it. The bezels on these screens are pretty small, so I reckon just make do with them. So to my mind, the double wide ones, probably not worth your time for this technique, but that's okay. What about the corner LCDs? These should still show the text. They're a standard block in width, but they're much, much shorter. So I wonder if, um, I think we're just gonna get the top row. Mono space, point 0.1. Yeah. So if you're clever enough, you might be able to make a small enough image that works even for these corner LCDs. At a rough guess, and looking at the radioactive image, I think they hold about 28 pixels worth in height. So make what clever uses of that you will. The last thing I want to look at is what we can do with stretching these images across multiple LCDs. What if we want to create some sort of billboard? Something with a bigger version of the image. What if we wanted to place it across a 2x3 grid like this one? Well, SE image to LCD allows you to do that, and let's have a look at how. Let's bring it up, and let's open up the software, and we'll use this sunrise image. I've prepared this sunrise image earlier to make sure that it will work. I've sized it to those dimensions of 2x3. We uncheck the RLA encode, we check split image and we say rows 2, columns 3 and click convert. While that's converting, and it may take a little bit of time, I want to talk about how you can save that text for later. The easiest way that's probably available to everybody out there with Windows is putting it in a rich text format style document. And you can simply create one of those with right click, new, rich text format. And when you open it up and paste in that information into your rich text format document, whether you open it in Word or whatever else, it'll look something like this, possibly. That will still easily be able to be copied back into Space Engineers and give you the image that you originally created in the text format. So that's kind of handy because sometimes this conversion can take a little bit of time. And we'll jump ahead to when that's finally rendered and we're ready to copy them in back into the game. All right, and there we have it. We have our two by three grid. And to identify which one we're looking at, we can simply click on it and it'll give us our little thumbnail. So we'll click on the top left and we'll start with that. 
Click copy to clipboard and it will only give us the text for that top left one. So we jump back into Space Engineers, interact with our screen and we'll place it in there. Okay. Need to scroll down because I can't see the mono space. And font size 0.1. And I forgot to put display on text. Display text on screen. There we go. And we'll do it for the rest of them. If you've got a really eagle eye, you might see that I didn't do this in the most efficient way possible. You're probably best off selecting all of your LCDs, setting up the font, setting up the font size, setting up display on screen, and then copying your text into each LCD. That would have been quicker. But at least this is quick for you. And there you have it. A beautiful sunrise on a high hill looking over the east coast of Australia. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And the size of this image, you can see the bezels really are tiny and don't have a big impact on the image. The gaps on those screens, that's easy to put up with. I don't really mind. The colour depth does leave a little bit to be desired and you can get better colour depth by importing these as a mod. I'd say that's actually still pretty good looking. So there you have it. There's some playing around with LCDs and what you can do with them in Space Engineers and using the SE image to LCD software. The link for the software will be in the description so you can download it and put all sorts of crazy pictures into your Space Engineers games. I have plans to revisit LCDs in the future. I really want to look at how to create the mods to put pictures into the game that are better quality than these ones. And I also want to look at some useful scripts out there that you can put onto your LCDs that don't require too much knowledge of the scripting itself. That's pretty much because I won't be able to understand the scripts. But you don't need to tell anyone that. That and many more things are to come, including parachutes. So I'll see you then.